Let's go. Hey, what's up guys? Toby here from Tech Me Now, and today we are taking a look at LG's somewhat risky G5. So the box resembles one of the new features in the G5, the modules that they call friends. And I have the camera plus one right here. And in the box, we get the phone, a USB type A to USB type C charging cable, a wall adapter, and an empty space that looks to be for earpods, although my version did not come with any. The G5 is this year's addition to the G series, and this time they took a very different approach when they added the second rear facing camera and the much talked about friends system. And we will definitely talk more about these later in the video, but as usual, we will start off by looking at the specifications and the build of the G5. The G5 features the new Snapdragon 820 processor paired with 4 gigs of RAM and the Adreno 530 GPU. Its display is a 5.3 inch 1440p IPS display with Corning Gorilla Glass 4. The battery has a capacity of 2800 milliamp hours, but that can actually be increased with some of the modules, and more on that later in the video. The battery is also removable and can quick charge via the new USB Type C cable. Alright, camera time. The primary standard view camera has 16 megapixels and an aperture of f1.8. The second camera, which is super wide by the way, has 8 megapixels and an aperture of f2.4. They're both capable of shooting in 4K and in manual mode. The front facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter with an aperture of f2.0 and the rest of the specifications are pretty much the same as any modern smartphone today so let's not bore you guys with the specs and get right into the review. So pretty much every review that I make goes as follows. So yeah, this is the display. I like this, but not that, etc. But this time we are going to change things up and start the review by talking about the new features that LG implemented to the G5. So let's start off with the cameras. This is not the first time that LG makes a phone with dual cameras. Last year with V10, they had two front facing cameras, but now they switched things up and made the G5 with the two cameras in the rear instead. And I gotta say, I love this change. The main camera has a view of 78 degrees and the second one has a view of 135, which looks awesome as you can see on the pictures taken with it. They both use laser autofocus and optic image stabilization and it works great. Pictures are good and colors are accurate, although in my opinion they are a little over sharpened. But some people like that. You can also use both cameras in full manual mode to get DSLR like controls like shutter speed, ISO, focus, white balance and more. So if you spend some time tinkering with it, you can get some pretty awesome looking videos and images. Low light performance is not the best and highlights do look a little bit blown out, but when using HDR those issues get mostly solved. The G5 has a mechanism which enables you to change the bottom part of the phone with something called friends. These are modules that have different tasks or enables a few features, and to change modules, press on the lower left side button with your fingernail and the bottom part will be separated from the phone. And then just pull to get the module out and remove the battery which requires a bit of force and then insert the, that battery into the new module and then just slide that whole thing into the phone. It's pretty easy, although you gotta use a lot of force when removing the battery and it kind of feels like you're breaking it. The module I have is the Cam Plus one, and it has an extra 1200 milliamp hour battery built in, and that will significantly increase your battery life. It has a dedicated shutter button, a scroll wheel to zoom, a video record button, and a switch to launch into the camera app. And it also acts as a grip to make it feel more like an elaborate camera. Alright, those are the two main new features in the G5, so let's continue with the general phone review. The G5 is made out of metal, but it doesn't feel like it. They added some kind of plastic coating, most likely to hide the antenna bands and to make it look more seamless, and it does just that, but I lack this sense of exclusivity because it just doesn't feel as premium as it looks. 
but I do like the weight of it. It feels sturdy and well built, like any other phone of this price should. On the bottom, there's some speaker grills, a USB Type C port, and a microphone. And on the left side, there's a volume rocker that feels clicky and tactile. The power button is on the back, just like the V10 and the Nexus 5X that they made. Some people have said that it feels wobbly and plasticky, but I haven't experienced any of that. Maybe it's just their review units. Setting the fingerprint sensor up was easy and quick, and it worked with just a couple taps. It works great, it's fast and responsive, and I tested it 10 times, and it worked great each time with no problems whatsoever. The new Snapdragon chip and 4 gigs of RAM makes the G5 one of the fastest phones I've ever tested, and it handles multitasking like a beast with no hiccups or slowdowns at any point whatsoever. The experience is super smooth and everything runs like a charm, it's just perfect. Gaming works well too, again, with no hiccups or slowdowns at all. And in Geekbench, it scored a 2293 in single core and 5348 in multi-core, which puts it in the top of high-end smartphones, so performance on this thing is top-notch. The battery is not great, but I could definitely go through an entire day without charging, but not much more than that. So it discharges pretty quick, but it also charges quick thanks to the next-gen quick charge technology through the USB Type-C port. The Cam Plus module actually adds 1200 mAh, which is awesome because you can literally have it charge your phone while it's in your pocket, and it easily gave about 40% more juice. You charge the module just by charging the phone like you would anyway, so that's great. The screen is just like any other LG screen. They're not AMOLED, but they sure as hell look awesome. Viewing angles are good, colors are poppy and vibrant without getting annoying, and it's overall an awesome screen. I also love this slight edge on the top of the display. I don't know what it is or why it's there, but I love it. The bezels are also really small, so that's a plus. I also love that they chose to go for a 5.3 inch screen. It's big without being a problem, so you can watch Netflix and YouTube with joy. It's also good with one hand to use, so 5.3 inches is perfect. But of course, that's for me, but I think that I have pretty average sized hands. The speaker is good for not being front facing, but it's not front facing, so they're not even close to the best. Although I do like them, because they are a hell of a lot better than the 5X and the V10. And LG's skin is okay, it's not as bad as it has been before. I also like that instead of having a bunch of apps that do the same thing, they either have their version or the Google version, which is awesome and I would love for other people to do that as well. <clears throat> Samsung. With that aside, I still prefer to go with either the Google Now launcher or the Nova launcher as they're cleaner and look better in my opinion. <clears throat> yep, that's the G5. So in conclusion, the G5 is a top-notch phone with the most premium specifications, although that cannot be said for the build. It has a few features that have never been seen before, and I like that. It definitely was not the safest bet for LG, but I love that they are one of the companies that risk their success to shape the future of smartphones. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave a like if you liked the video, dislike if you didn't. Also, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.